All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you all back to another episode of the Reyes Reflection Podcast. As you know, I'm the host, Nathaniel Reyes. I missed an episode last week, and I apologize for that, but I do have other things to do. So nonetheless, though, uh, we're back to our normal scheduled broadcast. Now, we have had a plethora of fascinating guests, and this episode is no different. Uh, My next guest I've known for almost 14 years, I think, Uh, something like that. Yeah, around there. Um, (laughs) He is a former professional basketball player in Switzerland. He's also been dunked on by me. Just kidding. That's oh, that. That's never <laughs> <laughs> a cryptocurrency savant and an overall stand-up dude. Please welcome my friend, joining me from Canada, Travis Wilkerson. Thank you for coming on. Hey, thank you for having me. So we tried to do something earlier, but I know uh, you were in Europe, right, with your vacation with your with your bay. How was that? No, that was amazing. Yeah. My first time up in uh, in Finland. It's cold up there, but it's it can be really beautiful. Nice, nice. Um, and she she plays professional volleyball over there, right? Or something like that? Yeah, yeah. She played there uh, last season, and next season she'll be playing in Spain. So probably pop over there too. Wow, look at that. Spain. I've yeah. always wanted to go to Spain. I've heard it's beautiful. I've never been, but I've always... That's that's a bucket list for me. Yeah, no, and I, it's a lot warmer, so uh, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. As previously mentioned, you are a professional basketball player overseas. Let's talk a little bit how you got to that point other than you having the genes of being 6'7". Yeah. Um, well, it's always interesting um, hearing people's paths to uh, playing professionally. It really does. There's, of course, yes, a level of, of skill in, involved, but there's also um, connections. Now, uh, luckily enough, my dad was a former uh, professional as well. He was drafted actually in the NBA back in 84, but then continued playing all around Europe. So... Um, when I was done, uh, my studies here, I know I wanted to try to pursue uh, a professional basketball career. So I called up my dad cause he still lives in Europe. And if he had any connections or if he can organize any kind of tryouts or, you know, private sessions with any of the coaches and teams. So he set that up. And, uh, right when I graduated, I flew over Switzerland, went to tryout after tryout, testing after testing until uh, one of the teams uh, decided to sign uh, yeah, to sign me. That's awesome, man. Uh, yeah. You played in college, obviously. Where did you play? Actually, for one year, actually, is at York University um, here in Toronto, and it was really just for the first year. Um, oh, okay. Sad to say that I really did enjoy my experience, um, and it kind of, for a moment, I shied away from basketball and was thinking, hey, let me focus on studies, and that was eating eating me you know, from the inside out. So I knew um, by the time I was finishing university, I had to get back in the groove, pick it back up. It took a lot. It took a lot to pick back up. But um, but I had to because it was kind of on my conscience and I was feeling kind of guilty of of letting go of the dream. So you were a one and done player. (laughs) I was I I went cold turkey. I think I had such a love for the game. Like I've been playing since since I can remember, like since I had two, yeah, everybody has two feet, but like, since I could walk, I remember playing and, you know, I think it was around high school where, you know, there's a lot of pressure saying, you know, you got to have a plan B, you know, you got to, you know, all this stuff. And I was doing well in school. So I was thinking, you know, maybe is this, is this my love? Is this my passion? Am I ready to, you know, maybe give up a little bit of grades to focus a little more on sports Yeah. and then having not the best experience at, you know, university level, it kind of shocked me thinking, you know, it was the first time, like, it was pretty bad for me. It was the first time I didn't want to play basketball. Like, oh, on wow. Court. So you almost, so, so you were like, you almost were like, I'm done. I'm quitting. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, if I, if I can not love the game so quick, yeah. then it's not something I can put, you know, everything into so i went cold turkey i didn't watch basketball i didn't touch basketball i started playing like volleyball and football and stuff like that for fun um but it ate me up inside um and so i had to i was gonna say that loop better i was gonna say i do know that you've been playing for a while because that's how i met you and we we were in a we were in a summer camp and uh we were on the same team and that's how that's how i met you back in the day but um yeah wow no so that's wild So that 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 must have been a really really hard experience for you then for yeah. you to be willing to walk away from it like you said and just be like I'm done it's 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 behind me at this point 
I've got other mm-hmm. things to focus on. So that must have been really hard, a uh, hard spot for you mentally, physically, emotionally. Definitely was. I think, which is interesting. I think I kind of compensated by getting really heavy into gaming. Like I just start, I, I just became a gaming just nerd. Like I was just spending hours and hours gaming, and I think it was to kind of fill that that void. Yeah. Um, but it was almost impossible to um to ignore because I am so tall. Everywhere <laughs> I walk, people are like, "Hey, you're tall. Do you play basketball? Hey, you play basketball." And, and I was just thinking like, not anymore, not anymore. So yeah, it, it took a lot. It took a lot to try to to figure out. That you're like, I can just myself. be a tall carpenter or a tall <laughs> painter or something, right? Yeah. 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 So. <laughs> well, well I mean, you are blessed with those genes. So you do. How tall yeah. is your How tall is your dad? My dad's six ten. Well, okay. All so right. yeah, he's 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 got a couple inches on me and more length than me too. So he's a he's a pretty big dude. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to that, how was his experience playing? professionally was it like successful like for him was he pretty successful oh yeah he was he was very successful in playing now he wasn't successful in like the nba in right. uh, north america uh, as he didn't get much playing time um but he played in, in in turkey france germany japan um switzerland as well like he went all over the globe and and you know some of the contracts are some pretty good contracts as well um, but really, uh, he, he always reflects on the experiences and the culture and the people that he met uh, throughout his uh, his years playing. And he was he's a pretty dominant force. Like, Down low. he was a pretty good. He was yeah. pretty. He was, he's just talented. <laughs> like, I, I know he's my dad. So, I you know, it, it sounds a little biased. But even even like when I was in Switzerland, I'd play with it against him one on one. And he was like 58 at that time. And like, he could still, he could still he, put he was, it down. He, he was, he was, he was giving you that barbecue chicken, huh? He was, he could still put it down. Yeah. It's just like, damn. I was like, damn, man. <laughs> Imagine how you were when you're in your twenties. You Seriously. Know? So, yeah. It, yeah. That goes yeah. to show you the level um, to play in the league, but also side note, you, a lot of people think, oh, if you're in the league, that's what makes you successful. Not, that's not always the case. Like there's yeah. some people, yeah. uh, I was just watching a, uh, a podcast the other day with a former NBA player, Dwayne Bacon. And he was talking about how he went through a severe depression because he never Mm -hmm. played. And Mm -hmm. whereas, and he was saying that how, if he had went overseas or something like that, I'm paraphrasing of course, but so a lot of times success is based on how you view it and, and and your success. And a lot of times when you get to play more and you get to have that experience, that's a little bit more of a successful thing than just, you know, Hey, I'm in the league. A lot of people know me or things like that. And in some cases, some people don't even know who you are. You can be in the league and people right. don't know who you are. 100%. And I've also heard that sometimes those overseas people love those those players. They they because to them they're like, "Whoa, this is like a commodity here. This is a yeah. hot a hot ticket to get." So, yeah. no, I, I kudos to your dad. And so for you and your success out there. Mhm starter like what what was that like for you out there like what what was it like when you got signed yeah so it was it was kind of it was ups and downs because uh so i played for four years um but i played for four different teams each year every year yes yeah. so i was you know moving up teams moving down teams up so it was kind of very it was fluctuating a lot and it was a it was an interesting experience actually it was yeah so my first team um i was i was coming off the bench um i was kind of a late sign like a late sign like mid-season sign mid-season type of acquisition. no like just at the beginning of season oh um, okay and so they already had spots filled but they were still interested in me because you know there's injuries and, and all that stuff so i was kind of right. doing a, a catch-up you know at the beginning and i'd have to overtake somebody else's position right so it was like rough at the beginning but i was getting you know more and more recognition as the as the season went on but, you know, on a stat sheet, you don't get the best at the end of the season. And that's kind of what's important for you to get another team, yeah. to get onto another team. So my second year, I, I went down a league to the, the to the team that won the second division. Now, when you win the second division, you could move up if the president decides and has the money to, or they can stay. So um, they're a really good team, uh, had really good connections from the past. I joined that one. And for that one, I was starting, you know, leading, kind of leading the team with another American, uh, shout out to Larry. Uh, He's still out there, Um, you know, pushing the team that way. And then my third year, I went back up 
uh, to now, and this was a bit of a push. My dad pushed me, but I went to like uh, the second, third best team now in the first division. So it was like super intense. And so I'm back up in the, you know, high, high intensity game. And there I was again coming off the bench, but it was super competitive because everyone in our positions were pretty much equal. So it was a fight, you know, every practice, every day. A dog fight. It was a fight. great experience. Yeah, yeah. It was a dog, dog fight. And then for my last season, uh, that was the COVID season. Oh, and, no kidding. Uh, that one was was just messy. Like teams were dropping players, contracts, couldn't get paid. Like it was it was really messy. So I kind of went down one division, and uh, I ended up being the captain of that team, and kind of was just enjoying and uh, you know making sure you know getting our practices and runs in and, and trying to compete. It was a brand new team that started um, in a city uh there and um yeah I, I, and then that's kind of where i i closed it off i closed the loop before coming back to toronto yeah so so that so did your season get shut down because of covid or were you yeah. able to play it and then it it ended or it got shut down mid-season it was my third yeah the third season the the, the intense one it, it got shut down in march and we were we were second place we're gonna face the first place team for the first place spot like it was like a wednesday and the league got shut down on monday our coach was like no we got to play this game like we got to settle who's the who's the top team but but they had to close off the season that march yeah it's and that then competitive i was just fire of your coach he probably he if he could he probably would have organized some backyard game and oh like, for this, sure this is what I, we're doing I, <laughs> our coach was kind of nuts that year he was kind of nuts like it was it was like preseason all season like he'd never put his foot off the gas of how hard we were training yeah i guess because we were doing so well he thought if he ever let loose a little then we might lose it yeah so and you know we we had a really good group of guys and that's what you know held us in through all that that training and we just knew that we needed to beat this first place team because they literally win every season it's like uh it's yeah it's so you had a, you had a legitimate team. shot to yeah overtake them yeah 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 wow and uh then it got it got cut it got cut like that global then, pandemic uh, uh, yeah yeah what what yeah. can you i mean what can you do that was out of our that was out of everyone's control yeah so let me ask you this would you ever would you ever consider playing professional again at this point i'm good <laughs> I'm good coach. I don't want to run anymore. Yeah. Um, no, but like it was, it was a great experience for me. It was, it was a big, you know, relief of that regret that I had of stopping. It was an amazing experience living in, in Switzerland or just traveling abroad and being in a different environment and being in a different lifestyle. I was picking, I picked up French while I was there. Um, like it, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a totally different lifestyle there. So to experience it as like a difference from even just North American, Canadian or American kind of culture, yeah. it was really nice. Um, it's very taxing on your body though. Um, yeah. it really gets to a point where it's not necessarily skill, but it's more sustainability. Can you sustain that lifestyle? Can your body sustain the, the work and the, the, the push? And is that what you want to, to have? And, to that degree, I think I'm okay. Um, I still play casually. I'll join a men's league and you know play around with friends. But to go the professional route, it really is a different level. So, so you're you're all set. You you can walk away yeah. with your head up high, knowing that you've accomplished what yeah. you what you did. One hundred percent. How how do you how do you say how do you say great job in French then? Uh, bien fait or that's kind of like a good job yeah there you Bien go fait. so so th that that that's what i'm saying to you right now if i could Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> i can't speak french so let's transition into this cryptocurrency yeah. you're yeah. really big on that you were talking about the gaming i know we'll, we'll get into all the avenues of of crypto um yeah. do your best to explain crypto Ooh. to someone who's never ever understood never understood it layman's terms okay Oof, even that has layers. Um, so, so the the very basics of crypto is is um, it's merging a uh, new technology uh, with the financial system that we have today, um, and that new technology is blockchain technology. If you've heard of it or not, now it is kind of two separate things because with 
blockchain technology itself, like even if you don't believe in crypto, you can believe in the blockchain technology. It's almost like not liking social media, but you believe in the internet because, you know, the okay. internet is not yeah. just social media. Right. right? Yeah. But it's a crypto, big part of it. Yeah. It's a big part of it. Yes. But the internet itself can have many more functions than just social media. So with crypto, it's finance on a blockchain. Okay. So the underlying technology is new and it's it's here to stay. Um, and then now it's, it's the, a, a new financial system built on this technology. Like that's nice at its base base. I, then, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. I, li I like that. I was going to have gonna, to explain blockchain, but that's, you know, that's I was going to, yeah, I was right going to make a joke and say, um, explain it to me as if I'm a five-year-old now, but uh, uh. <laughs> no, no, I, I understood that that was stolen <laughs> yeah. from the office, Michael Scott. Um, no, I, I definitely understood that. So how did you get into cryptocurrency? Cause I know it kind of, yeah. It, it, it's been around for a while it has a lot of, but mm. just people it, it, like like a lot of things they don't really notice it until people start to really generate the steam of yeah. it so how did you get into it yeah so for me um i was i never had a really big financial background or literacy or anything like that growing up um i always thought like oh i was interested in getting to understand stocks and stuff like that same yeah um and it was and i and i was just it was always in the back of my mind and i just never really knew who to ask or where to or put my own you know effort into finding and researching and i know i had one friend that was already in crypto and i was seeing some of his instagram stories and stuff but of course like every other crypto person you kind of just let it slide and it was actually um, in my apartment in Switzerland. So while I was playing, there was a Bitcoin ATM that showed up on my ground floor. And wow. in Switzerland, there's a lot of rules. And for an ATM to pop up like that, like somebody must have went through a lot of hurdles. So in my mind, I already thought this, this is more than something small. Like there's something big is happening if even Switzerland's allowing it because they just really don't allow anything. Like they don't even allow certain candy into the country because it has too much sugar. So really? for a Bitcoin ATM to show up, I'm like, uh, <laughs> this doesn't just slip through. So that's what got me started on, on trying to do some research. You know, I ended up contacting that one friend to say, hey, how do I even just get started? You know, he gave me a few tips on some um, uh, exchanges or websites to start looking to, you know, buy my first crypto. And then, um, and then it was around COVID. So I was unsure if we'd have a basketball season or not. So I had a lot of free time. We weren't allowed to practice or anything like that. So I just started reading, researching, trying to understand, watching a lot of video. There's a lot of information online. Um, and then that's kind of how I grew an interest. And I started, yeah, seeing, seeing what's out there and put the potential. So it's it's crashing now right right or they or, yeah, or it's, it's struggling right now is that yeah. is that correct okay so, yeah we're in a we're in a bearish market yes so is it similar to stocks in the sense that it does fluctuate like that like it goes up and down based on certain resource i'm I, you know not, yeah, yeah. i'm not i'm not sure so is it, it does does the whole thing with russia have anything to do with it is that could that play into effect or um Indirectly, yes, because the things with Russia are affecting the traditional stock market. So as of still today, there is some correlation between the cryptocurrency market and the traditional stock market. Like they, they don't go perfectly hand in hand, but they do follow follow a, a relatively similar pattern. So, I mean, if the world is doing poorly, crypto will probably be affected by it, you know, nevertheless. Would, would follow suit. Yeah, similar yeah. to stocks in that regard. So. What are the different types? Like, I know I, I I'm oh, going to let you question. go ahead. I'm going to let you go ahead and explain the different types of crypto because. OK, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a that's that's a good question. Um, If I was to break it down, I'm thinking four now, but I think there's three types of cryptocurrencies. I might switch that to four as I'm explaining. We'll see. We'll start with three. Um, There's like net there's network tokens uh, and I'll give the definition of all three. So there's network tokens. There's governance tokens and there's utility tokens. Okay, so for network tokens, it's it's kind of like it, it, it's they say it's the native token for a network. It's like let's see how would I explain this? Um, things are built on networks, right? You could think of it as Google Chrome. Okay. Think of it as Google Chrome. Think of it as Firefox. You know, there's different there's different web browsers. In yeah. The, 
right? Yeah. So in crypto, there's also different networks where people can build things on. So you could almost build a Google Chrome app or you can build a Firefox app, right? And so there's some tokens that you need for the actual network. So it'd be like Google Chrome coin and Mozilla Firefox coin. And anything you do on that network, you need to burn a little bit of that coin to do anything, to send, to create and all that. So there's like the overall network. Now, the biggest ones, like Ethereum, if you've heard of Ethereum, Ethereum I is have, yep. one. Solana is one. Polygon is another. There's, there's a whole bunch now. Um, and yeah, I have my different opinions on each. But yes, uh, so there's, there's yeah, so there's network coins or tokens, right? I have, an, I have an Ethereum. I just want to say that I'm, I'm actually looking at right now. I, I'm, I'm looking at my crypto. So I do have okay. Ether, Ethereum. Yeah. Uh, okay. Good. 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 That's yeah. a good one. Good, good, good. I also have uh, I also have Bitcoin. Yeah. I also have Bitcoin. Okay, great, 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 great. Yeah, that's the that's and, one and, of the stronger ones to have now. And then I have two other ones, and then we uh, uh -oh, Litcoin. He's not a Which one? Litcoin. Litcoin? Litcoin. Okay. Is it Litecoin? Litecoin, yeah. And then I have um Bitcoin Cash. Is that the same thing? Okay. As Is it? Uh, okay. That one. Uh, All right, that one's sus. All right, we'll talk about that. <laughs> <in a minute. laughs> the Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash. In my opinion, they're a little outdated. Okay, that those but, two, those two are sus. I may have lost some money on those two, but those were the first two I bought. But yes, but. which is it's very common for that. Those were the top ones four years ago. Okay, so it makes sense. All um, right. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, no problem. So okay, so the the second type is um, governance tokens. Now, governance tokens is very interesting, and the model of governance is still being built to this day. Like a, a proper functioning governance model is still in the works, and a lot of are testing out different ways. Now, by governance, they just mean that if you own these tokens, you have a vote or a say in how things change. You could almost imagine that if Apple stocks were governance tokens, depending on how many Apple stocks you say, you can vote, let's say you own 10, you could vote 10 points towards yes or 10 points towards no in the new iphone x7 do you want it to come in these colors you know you can vote yes and no okay by owning these tokens so you have a say as a community member and you have some governance over the decisions that are being made kind of sounds like a shareholder type of um yeah like and the feel. value of those is the val the value of having that say so some people that you know maybe can benefit from having a certain amount of influence will value it at a certain way versus versus others. Yep. Yeah. So, so that, yeah, that's the second type. Uh, and then the third type is a utility token. Um, this one uh, kind of implicit within the name is it's their tokens used for something. Um, this one is the easiest example I could think of is gaming. Um, so, you know, when you play a game and you own, uh, you earn gold, within a game yeah that could be turned into a cryptocurrency that gets put as an actual token now usually they have an unlimited supply and usually use the gold to upgrade armor or you know or you know get a new little avatar so you're just really using it to burn like it doesn't have necessarily a big use case other than having fun or upgrading something so there's those tokens that also float around um some people on different platforms have different things. You could have a, you know, Reyes token that, you know, I don't know. If you hold 100, you could spend 10 and you can shoot a message, a question, you know, so that, you know, something just fun for people to use. I got to get and, on that. I got to get on you know, that. Like, there's little things you could always do, right? You could, yeah. You know, yes. Use 50 tokens to put a question up that, you know, the person answers or whatever. So well, that would be a cool. utility token. And it's light and... Maybe they're worth one cent each or half a cent each. Like it usually doesn't hold too much value other than the entertainment or fun. Or uh, of, oh, thing. my question got answered live or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. exactly. Yeah. So those are not those that you're going to make a hundred million dollars off. You know, it's like, it's more of just, they're there to be used and, and burned. So yeah. you touch base on the gaming. So yeah, there's, there's gaming. Yeah. And NFTs, is that correct? Yeah. Is there yeah. and and what are, what are the other what are, there, there's a couple other things too, right? Or is or is that? Yeah. So that's why I was like, maybe there's a fourth category with with crypto because there are NFTs. Yeah. Um. 
which are non fun fungible tokens, right? Is that is nice, that is that nice, what it is? is that, nice, yeah. not bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the oh, the NFT space is it's 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 a space of its own as well. Um, there's 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 different use cases for NFTs. Um, that also probably breaks down into three, I would say. Uh, so NFTs, um, the first and I guess easiest use case is just for the art. You know, some artists can can make some uh, digital art, put it up as an NFT. And so this is where the blockchain technology comes in handy because just very short with blockchain technology, you can see every transaction that happens with any token or any NFT. So you can always trace it back to its origin. Now, what's cool with art is if I create an art NFT, they can know that I created it because it came from my wallet. So if I sell it or if it moves around, you can always trace that this is Travis's artwork. So if somebody copied it, you trace it back. You're like, no, this is from Bob's diner. This is not the real art. Right? Yeah. This is a okay. copy. I was wondering, so, I was wondering yeah. that because that, that was the first yeah. thing I thought in my head. I go, can't someone just copy and steal it? But I didn't know that they, that they it makes sense that there's this whole system to prevent that. Yep. Yeah, it's yeah. So every transaction in any crypto ecosystem is all recorded. So you can always trace it back. And that's why NFTs have some kind of utility more than just, you know, right click and save and I make it myself. Right. Yeah. There's a, <laughs> Co there's a lot of that. Copy the phone. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So the, a famous digital artist is Beeple and he really grew with this digital art because um, he was doing a, one piece of art every day for the last I think two years, I would say, or maybe even more, seven years. I, my number, it's been a while since I've looked into that category, but he was doing a digital art every day for years. And then now he just put it as NFTs every day and then had a whole collection of his art over the past days. And that held a lot of value because he's a very popular artist. Okay. It's definitely coming from him. So that there is a, there is a section for digital artists with NFTs. And I think that's the most simple of the cases. Is that um, the same thing as like NFTs. photos? And the reason why I ask is because I know there's a couple of celebrities that I follow on social media that they did like NFT portfolios or something like that okay. in which you can buy a photo of them. Um, huh. Yeah. Is that it? So is okay. that the same thing as like pictures? So with that, you're kind of leaning into a possible other category and that's like intellectual property. Oh, and that okay, if you yeah. if you're buying somebody's NFT or someone's art, then you're they're giving you the rights to use it as your own, like in a sense. OK, so that became an emerging thing. And that's where NBA Top Shot started kind of uh, popping up, although they don't give you intellectual property rights. So there's like, a OK, why am I buying this again or not? Yeah. You can buy highlights from the NBA. Right. So, you know, you own this highlight like a collectible card. Um, but then people were asking, can I, can I post it somewhere? Can I, you know, frame it? Can I make a video with it? And I don't think you are quite allowed to do that, um, based off NBA's, you know, rules. Oh, when they say like, uh, this is a sole property, uh, it's yes. to the, yeah, so, to the so then there's that talk of, okay, well, what can I buy and use? And yep. that's kind of where the board apes came really popular because the, they give full intellectual property rights to the owners. Um, I think there's a guy who who made a restaurant based off his board ape called Board and Hungry, and the logo is his board ape. So he's totally allowed to do that, and that's you know that's the one with the country. with the monkeys, right? Like I've seen, yeah. I, I've yeah. seen that. All right, so that yeah. I was wondering that because you were just saying how um it's solely to that artist, but I didn't yeah. know that 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 they allowed that because I see a lot of people with a different one, and I'm like, yeah, wait yeah. a minute, what? So. To the average person, that could be pretty confusing. But when you understand it and hear like something like this, mm -hmm. how it's breaking down and broken down, yeah. excuse me, it makes a lot of sense. It, it's very yeah. understandable. Yeah. And what's crazy is these all these things that are happening are like happening in real time. And like, for example, Board Apes started a month a year ago. I I believe it or not, remember seeing Board Apes at two hundred dollars. Right now they go for eighty to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars right because in this past year they've actually built something they've built a brand they've built a name yeah. that these things have value and this is in the last one year um and like even in the next two months from now there's going to be things different that are like being worked on right now that are coming out even at the end of the year so the space moves in real time so you just gotta if you can find the right 
holes and get ahead of the wave, that's when it's like really interesting and sometimes really profitable. Um, so, and that, so it's, yeah, it's crazy. And I think a lot of like, um, well, more people with much more money are trying to do yeah. that now. And that's why you hear like some athletes are getting their salaries or, or a portion yeah, of their crypto. salaries in crypto yeah. and things like that. So you can't, you can't spend it though. Right. Is that, is that correct? Like I, like, could I, could I go ahead and like buy something with cryptocurrency? If somebody's accepting crypto, then you could, but as far as, um, well, uh, it's, it's coming again, it's things being built. Um, in El Salvador, you can pay in Bitcoin. Hey, they accept, it's, I'm, it's a legal. I'm part, I'm part Salvadorian, so maybe I got to get down to my people. Then it is legal tender there. Like really, it is, if you go on Wikipedia and look at El Salvador's currencies, they'll have Bitcoin as part of their legal tender. So some country, there's one other place in Africa too, but it's it's showing up and uh, popping up. I think Miami wants to do it as well, or they're very crypto um, friendly. Yep. Um, LA is LA is always interesting. They're always in with all different cultural stuff so yeah uh we'll see how how that you know affects there but besides that i think somebody was arguing that nfts were the first things to really buy with crypto and that's also probably why they got a lot of traction yep and then on top of that there are some exchanges that have made their own um debit cards where you can have your crypto on an exchange and if you wanted to pay with a debit card it would convert some of your crypto into whatever dollar you need to pay okay so it does that transition for you so are you really paying with crypto not really but it's quickly changing it to your dollar so you can pay oh wow all right yeah. so it sounds like i have one of the cards it, yeah. oh you do i have tried it, it was, I, I tried everything when i started like I, I signed up for everything i tried everything so it, it works pretty well yeah. and they give you some of their own utility token every time you use their card it's almost like points you know like like uh, a credit card like another like a five percent cash back type of deal exactly and, and they give it in their crypto token that you can use to increase your bonuses you can use to earn whatever so yeah damn. it has that whole system it's really being. it's re it's really moving up i i mean like like I, like I said, even though it's struggling right now, because I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's yeah. struggling. I feel, I feel dumb that I spent money. It's like, yeah, but it's, it, it's yeah. like a stock. Like those things will crash, but then uh -huh. all of a sudden, I mean, look at what happened to GameStop over, over COVID. Who yeah. would have thought that yeah. GameStop stock would have? If you that asked me funny. about GameStop, I thought a year and a half. Oh, sorry, not a year and a half ago. During COVID, a year before COVID happened, that thing was dead in the water, and now yeah. here it, and and so I mean, hey. Yeah nuts you never know never know you never know so in other words best advice that you could give to someone who i want to hear your best advice that you would give to someone who is not in crypto right now okay if you want to get your feet wet just buy some bitcoin and ethereum that's that's safe those are the 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 groundworks of the ecosystem um anything besides that i would say like I mean, you should be doing research anyways on anything you invest in, but anything like that, you should see possibly what the future is or what's happening and have some kind of conviction um, because a lot of things come and go and a lot of things are very vol volatile. Um, but with Bitcoin and Ethereum, like if those were to go down, then the, the whole the whole narrative is done, like the whole ecosystem is done. So if you're going to make any bet that you want to be safe, those are the two. Anything besides those, it's... Yeah, it's it's something that you personally can like or find a little niche in. Yeah, it, it, it is fascinating. It is fascinating. Yeah. So, yeah, you're also the co-founder of the Generation Axie Scholarship. Can you tell yeah. me a little bit more about that? Oh, you did some research. Um, so I, I do my homework. Yeah. So this this is um this is part of the gaming uh company that me and my best friend made again over the past year and a half now um so one of the major games in the space oof, is axie infinity it's this like a uh, pokemon like battling game um that uses nfts tokens and has a whole game and battling system uh they have a new version of game being worked on right now and even people giving community feedback is showing up in the game it's really cool there's going to be an official launch of it sometime at the end of this year so you guys will hopefully hear about it um, but anyways, um, this game is very interesting is the first of its kind to really be pushed out into the market, uh, in the crypto space. So, um, the way it works, it's pretty complex in the way it works. I'm trying to think how to say this as briefly and, uh, understandably as possible, but as you're battling, 
uh, you earn these tokens called small love potions, right? It's these little potions. And with those potions, you can use that to breed more axes. So you get a mom and a dad axie, basically, and you get a child axie that grows into a full axie. And they take traits from their mother and father. So oh, okay. they have eyes, yeah. ears, you know, horns, uh, tail. All of those are different attacks. And you can mix to get the perfect combination you want. Right? Yeah. If you're familiar with Pokemon, you know, Pokemon's had four attacks. Imagine breeding with another Pokemon and mixing those attacks. That'd be you so kind cool. Of want one. That'd be you so want cool. one that's optimal, right? Yeah, and then yeah. You, you battle and all that stuff. So what's really cool with this game is um, the, the game developers – they they created the first uh, set of axes Pokemon, but after that, every other Pokemon was created by somebody playing. So obviously, you needed the first set, but now there's I think there's only over 10 million axes, and they're all uh, player generated. So somebody played, somebody bred, created a team, and maybe decided to sell this axe. So somebody else is buying. Maybe he likes this person's whatever. They're breeding their own little Axie farm to try to get their best team. So what's cool is that by playing the game, you are creating more assets within the game that you can now sell to other people. So it's kind of a player run economy um, after the devs you know, put down the initial few thousand to start. Everything else is run by players. So what's really cool is, especially last summer, it was very profitable to play this game because there's a very high demand for these axes. Um, so what it is, and they were pretty expensive at one point. I think axes went up to like three, four hundred dollars for one axie, and you wow. need three to play. Oh, so it got wow. really expensive for these, and people were breeding them like crazy, yep. playing the game hard, breeding. So what's cool is that the Philippines picked up on this game really quick. And you know other countries, but specifically the Philippines, it's just a lot of people couldn't afford these axes. Right. Yeah. So what we did is that we bought the axes, so we provided uh, them the game assets, and then we did um, a revenue split on what they earned from playing uh, around the numbers of they keep seventy five percent of what they earned, and we take twenty five percent. Because you provided the them the exactly. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. So they could play. They can earn from playing. They can decide to do what they want with their potions. They can sell them on the open market. They can try to breed axes of their own. And then we'll take 25% of the cut so that we can repay for the team and set somebody else up. Wow. So, I like that. So it's, so, yeah. So you're helping out, but wow, look at that. That's yeah. Cool. It's, it's really crazy. The, the amount of people that have come back and told us that, hey, we've been, because I mean, there's a point where we were paying some of our players like 1,200 a month from playing. I, I was going to say three axes yeah. and you're saying they're like three, 400 a pop. I mean, you're, you're, yeah. you're spending close to a grand or a little over a grand. Yeah. Yeah. On each, on each player and stuff like that, but they were generating a lot as well. Yeah. I was setting up the next players and some of them were able to pay for their school, fix houses, help with medication, help their parents. Some of them were making more than their parents, and especially during the pandemic and these times. Um, yeah, there's it, it definitely had a big impact on some people that we we couldn't even imagine. Um, so that was really cool. We grew from we started with five players and we grew to one hundred and seventy eight wow. uh, players. And that's that's around where we're at now. There's been with this crash, there's been some dropouts. Axes are not nearly as expensive anymore. Okay. Um, yeah, they're actually very very cheap right now they haven't been this cheap in in years so it's it's a kind of a new era and the new version of the game's coming out so if now would be a decent time if you wanted to test out the game because i think some axes are like seven eight dollars now so i'm um, uh, i'm gonna give it a shot i'm giving it a shot yeah i'm gonna give if it you a also if you want to just try it out i can hook you up with a couple i have a lot of my personal axes that i play with all right so i could i can lend you three to just test out the game pay sure. it, it, it pays to know some people here we go there oh 100 100 hey so, like you said about your yeah. basketball you, your dad knew connections that's yeah that's what it's all about absolutely so axie infinity was the major game that really blew up this playing and earning space of crypto and this was allowed because of crypto because there's tokens because everything can be traded openly and it's allowed because normally i don't know how many video games you've played selling your account stuff is usually against the terms of service yeah if yeah, you, yeah, you MMO, can't, yeah if you're, if you're trying to sell skins and all that it's usually not allowed but with crypto it could very well be allowed because each skin each avatar could be an nft that you do own and can always sell to somebody 
Where, whereas a lot of time when you buy the skins and stuff like that, and those it's, it, it's, the, game. it's the game's uh, yeah. proprietary content. Yeah. Yes. No, yeah. I'm 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 a big gamer, a big retro gamer. Great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you don't mind asking, what kind of games do you play? Because I'm trying to see if there's a crypto right. version of the same. All game. right. So, oh, hit me. Right. Hit me. I'm into I'm into if we're talking present day because I like I said I love retro gaming. Um, but if we're right. talking present day, I'm. Do you know Fallout? Do you know Fallout? Yep. Uh, yeah, love, yeah. love that game. Um, Horizon. Love that stuff. Okay. Um, so, so more of like first player, um, adventure, open world that okay. I'm, I'm into that type of stuff. Okay. I okay. do love my Pokemon. So when you okay. said, I, I, yeah, I yeah. will admit, I, I, I have all my retro Pokemon. I even buy all the new ones. So I do love my yeah. Pokemon. Um, and obviously I'm, I'm a, I'm a sucker for 2k, even though, even though they, even though they're just recreating the same thing over yeah. and over. I'm still a sucker. I although I still play NBA 2K17. That one's my favorite one of all time. Okay. But um, cool. Those cool. are those are some of the games that I play nowadays. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, as far as Fallout, like it, it's a first person shooter, right? First like person shooter. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Open world. So, post apocalyptic. Yep. Yeah, I think there's one called Un Undead Blocks. I think they they're saying it's the closest to like zombies, Call of Duty zombies kind of thing. Undead blocks. Um, Undead blocks. I believe it's called. All right. Um. That one I think is is kind of the closest thing. These are still again like first first person shooters are just being built now. Like there's EV.io that's very early stages of a NFT shooter, and it's a very popular category. So I know the first one to come with a solid project is is going to do oh, probably pretty. Oh well. yeah, they're gonna they're gonna thrive. They're gonna thrive. Yeah. Yeah. And the open world kind of MMORPGs, those are the ones I love as well. And I have some tabs on quite a few. Those take, of course, a lot longer to build, and especially with an economy within these games. Um, but those will probably be popping off, I would think, sometime next year uh, before they kind of really get fleshed out. But I'm kind of, yeah, trying to keep up early uh, with some of the projects. All of them are usually on Twitter as well. Um, if, if you have a Twitter account, um, it's really big in crypto. I haven't used Twitter since high school. Same, ever yeah. since I got into crypto, you almost need a Twitter account because that's where you get all the information first and can make the most connections uh, in the space. So. Man, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to get it. I'm going to have to make a Twitter account now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. same, same. I have not, I, I haven't used it since high school. I, although I was, yeah. I'll admit I was popping off back in high school. I had some. Yeah, I, me too. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right i want to ask you this how's the progression on your piano playing going oh wow um yeah okay caught you off guard huh <laughs> <laughs> um it has uh has it halted it has it, it halted yeah. but it's funny because just uh, last week i reconnected my my keyboard and started you know playing again uh, i don't feel i'm as smooth as I was when I was kind of going consistent, but I still remember a lot of the songs yep. um, and getting the feel back of it. It was definitely something I wanted to pick up as a hobby while I was playing basketball that wasn't so physically demanding, mm -hmm. but better than just you know laying down watching Netflix every time I was tired. So yeah, uh, definitely something I love that I picked up and just still trying to keep it keep it relevant. You, you can today. still be yeah. sedentary and still yeah yeah absolutely. Yeah. I yeah. want to ask you this now. What is the most common misconception of Canadians? Oh God, um, <laughs> misconception. Let's see. Yeah, misconception. Yes. This okay. This a boot thing. I, I don't. I don't Wait, know. What is it? What is it? People are saying that we don't say about. We say a boot. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I, or unless I just said it, I don't know. Some people are like I hear it in your voice. No, you I said know. about. You said about. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that one I hear all the time, and I'm like, I don't. I don't even know what you're talking about. There, there is uh, one that I, I remember back in the day because uh, they were like the camp that we went to. There were Canadians that would go. And I remember um, bag or bag, like bagel okay. or bagel. Do you yeah, remember okay, that okay, one? Yeah, okay, bagel. And yeah, the <laughs> okay, bagel. So that one, okay, yeah. People, yeah, people say the two. They do. Okay, they do. All right, yeah, they yeah, say yeah, bagel instead of bagel, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah no, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah like that one I can't, I can't fight. I can't defend on. But the boot one, a boot. <laughs> Yeah. yeah oh man <laughs> would you ever lived in would you ever live in the states Ooh. um i think would all the stars I have to align 
With yeah, well, I don't know, because I mean, I was just in, I was just visiting uh, near the end of last year, and there's a lot of beautiful places in the states. Um, and I am American. Uh, I do have an American birth certificate, so I could live in the states. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. It might. Be, it. I love to visit, but to stay permanently, I don't know if I can. Yeah, we're we're like we're can. like your annoying downstairs neighbor. That's what we are to you, right? We're yeah, like <laughs> you said it. You I did. Said it. I did. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great to visit. I love the energy. I love the vibe. I love the you know the action. But to to sit there permanently, I'd just rather be living in Canada and traveling to the states. I'm gonna be um, in. A, I'm gonna be in California. Uh, I'm, okay. I'm moving. I'm gonna be in Cal. I'm moving. I'm gonna be out there. Um, the start of uh, September. If you're ever, okay. if you're ever like in the LA area, we'll 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 link up. Oh, and, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Although I'm going to Spain this October. Oh, that's right. Uh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? I I might have to tri- I might have to make the trip to Spain instead. Man, I, I told you that's my bucket list. That 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 yeah. is that is legit. We'll be there. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. But of course, if, I, if I'm ever in States, for sure, there's a lot of crypto things happening in Miami, New York and California. So if I ever can line something up and, and go, then I'll definitely hit you up, too. All right. Sounds great. Yeah. All right, buddy. Well, listen, I'm going to let you live. But uh, and thank you for coming on. But uh, before you go, where can people find yeah. you? I mean, like you just Perfect. said, yeah. Um, anything else you're working on uh, that you want to share? Where can people kind of get get? Uh, Travis's information because this is this is good stuff and you always keep it coming too. You're always good yeah. at this stuff. Yeah. So um, if you're really interested in the crypto and gaming space specifically, I my Twitter account is Travis Axie. Um, I might be rebranding soon because I'm partnering with some other groups and stuff. But Travis Axie, so T R A V I S A X I E at Twitter. Um, even just shoot me a message so I know that you're a real person. I'll probably follow you back. Um, uh, and I like to post things that I find thoughts and just progressions of different projects there. Um, if you're more interested in something a little more personal, you can find me on Instagram, uh, Travis Wilkerson, you know, written, written as is, um, those are probably the two best places. I did have a streaming session. I was streaming on On Twitch Twitch for quite some time, uh, for Travis Axie. I'm probably going to pick that back up and do a multiple multiple games instead of just axie infinity i'm going to rebrand and set that's all part of the rebranding and and setup so if you want to find me now you can find me on twitch with at travis axie and uh yeah awesome our discord our discord is generation axie if you want to pop in as well but that's uh that's kind of going deep now yeah yeah now now uh, well why don't you why don't you tell us your myspace while you're at it too no (laughs) No, uh, buddy, listen, that was great. Good stuff. I really appreciate you coming on once again. Um, I really love that you were able to educate people on crypto, educate me as well. I mean, it, this is it's a good space. You're always a good man. You're always a good dude. Appreciate I really it. appreciate you coming on and stopping on the Ray's Reflection Podcast. No, no, thanks for hitting me up and getting me on. You're welcome, my brother. So as always on the show, may you live, may you love, and may you thrive. I'm the male Oprah. I love you all. Take care, everyone.